Coffee Cast. This is Heidi Ellsworth, and I'm with Roofers Coffee Shop. And this Coffee Cast, sponsored by Hover, is a celebration of roofing contractors. And I am so honored to be here today with my dear friend, Julie Pastrito. We've worked together forever, and we get to interview our guest today. Hello, Julie. Hi, Heidi. It's great to be back. It's so exciting. And I, I'm really just the introduction here with Greg has been great. So I can't wait to just expose his incredible story to, to the know. network. Julie and I want to um, introduce the country, everyone, the roofing industry, to Greg Cerevitas, who is with USA General Contractors. I had the honor of meeting him at a recent National Roofing Partners um, Leadership Summit where they won Partner of the Year. And so I said, Julie, we need to interview Greg. He said, what a story. What a great um, story to celebrate roofing contractors. So Greg, welcome to the show. Thank you, Heidi. Thank you, Julie. Good morning. Good morning. We're so happy to have you. So let's, just to get started, please share your story with everybody listening. Yeah, going back to the early 90s, I was exposed to the roofing business with my dad. He brought me up on the roof at 11 or 12 years old and uh, took me on a big PVC job and uh, heat welding the seams. He was teaching me how to use the seam welder or the dog, as they call it in the industry. And uh, just I remember smelling the melting PVC and for probably a week or two after that, I was sick as a dog because <laughs> of the, the smells and what my body was being uh, exposed to. So my dad's famous line, since I was a kid, go to school. So you don't have to be in the roofing business. <laughs> Here I am. <laughs> so anyway, and in September, 2004, I, I started full time and, uh, yeah, they were, they were in the stone age for sure. Uh, at that point they were handwriting checks still and handwriting payroll checks, uh, 20, 30 payroll checks. I thought it was absurd. So uh, we incorporated QuickBooks into it and just started, um, you know, moving uh, ahead with the technology at the time. Did anything surprise you? Because it's like you said, like, okay, I'm coming up. I'm seeing my family are entrepreneurs, right? They're running mm -hmm. their own business, how they deal with employees. Like, did anything surprise you as you came and sat in that seat and like running this type of complex? I mean, especially with commercial. Right. There's a lot of complexity and paper trails and contracts and it's a lot of people anything surprise you that you were like, wow, didn't expect this. A lot of it has to do with my uncle leaving abruptly. He decided to retire in October 2007. And by the end of November 2007, he was out on top of my uncle retiring abruptly and not being a mentor for us going forward. Uh, we had the recession of 2008, 2009. Right. Yeah. So it was like, we got hammered and uh, we had to make some really hard decisions and uh, laying off family members and cutting back to a skeleton crew uh, in the office. And it, it was, it was tough. It was tough, but um, it made us stronger. It made us smarter. It, it brought us to that next level. And we got through that and we were like, all right, we can handle anything now. Like what we just yeah. went through, we can handle anything. So we celebrated your up learning, too. right? And your yeah. opportunity. And yeah. I, yeah. When you joined, you know, the first thing that stuck out was like, oh, we need to automate some of these things. You know, what sure. what are we doing manually? And just in the day and age we're in today, you know, I'd love to get a sense of, you know, what are the top strategies you guys are looking into? And I'd also be be curious to understand. How do you guys evaluate technology? Okay. Yeah, it's definitely overwhelming. You know, there's a lot to digest and it takes a long time. And a lot of people get uh, scared away from that, which I did too for a while. There was a lot of things I didn't jump into as fast as I should have because it just takes so much time 
to incorporate something so new into your business. But then uh, recently we, we uh, started using Dataforma for our service division. And even more recently, we started using Dataforma about two years ago in service, but now in the last month or two, we started incorporating it into the production side as well. And even bidding now, we're actually putting all of our bidding information and bid documents into Dataforma, all our contacts, so it's good. It's really great. Data Forma has been a huge success and I'm looking forward to incorporating into the production side 100% by, by year end. So what, what advice would you have for other people who, young, coming out of college, who's coming into your position, you know, where they want to take over the family business? Um, what were some of the, what's some of your advice to them? Like what is, so that they don't make some of the same mistakes, what would you recommend? Well, for starters, they better be ready to give it 110% and not hesitate. If you have any hesitation, you better think twice about what you're getting involved in any business because when you're running a business, there's no downtime mentally. You're, you're 24-7 thinking about the business and ways to improve and ways to cut costs and, and just educate yourself on how to structure a business, how to run a business because – the one thing that I see that my uncle did, which I don't agree with, was, like I said, a one-man show. And if you're a one-man show, you will burn out. And that's what he did. He burnt out. So mm-hmm. it's, it's very important to build a solid team, to have trust in the people and give them responsibility. Let them make mistakes. You know, mistakes will be made. Don't think that everything has to be done perfect all the time. Because when you have that mentality – oh, I I could just do it myself because I'll do it right. Then you become a one-man show and nobody wants to make decisions anymore because they're going to get yelled at for making a mistake. They're just going to leave the responsibility on you. And um, yeah, and then you go crazy. (laughs) Greg, what are some of those resources or do you have recommendations of, you know, maybe classes or books or like, I'm sure you do outside networking outside of the family or groups you're involved in anything that you suggest to Heidi's point for somebody just getting started? Um, Well, I have, I have a bookshelf behind me that I (laughs) tend to uh, pick up once in a while. So we got, Top Grading by Bradford Smart. Um, that's a good one. Um, yeah. The Ultimate Sales Machine. <laughs> Love that. Yeah. Sales, sales, sales is very important. Um, and actually, uh, Kyra from NRP bought me a few books that I have not read yet, but I will start soon. The Four Obsessions of an Extraordinary Executive. Yeah, that's a good one. A yeah, good one. you've read it? Yeah uh traction mm-hmm. uh who moved my cheese that one was I, I think kyra got me that one i haven't looked at that yet by spencer johnson <laughs> i've read that one too it's good that's a <laughs> yeah, yeah wow. that's, a, that's one of those foundational yeah, yeah. You, read, that's great. you read more than i do i i uh, i was reading a lot more earlier on and through college but i do have to start getting back into it it's not easy with two young kids you get home Hey, daddy's going to go read for an hour. That's yeah, no. <laughs> not happening. No way. Yeah. It doesn't work. I have an office at home and I go in the office, I close the door. I'm like, I tell my wife, I got to, you know, I need got to wrap up a few things when I get home from here and I'll go in the room and then I turn around. I got two kids banging on my glass door in my office. They want to come in. So then one sits on my lap, the other is, uh, you know, coloring. And I got one screen is playing Coco melon and the other one I'm working on it's it's awesome yeah it's fun it's awesome but again that's that's the work uh, personal and business balance yeah so one of the things that um we talked about right at the beginning is that you were the partner of the year for national roofing partners and um you said something really great earlier or and maybe it was even before we started this call but you had said it wasn't me it was my team so yeah. I'd love for you to talk a little bit more about that and just your overall, you've already mentioned a little bit, but your overall leadership principles and really that team mentality that won you a national recognition with one of the, you know, largest networks out there. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. It was, uh, it was definitely my team that uh, deserves that award that we received. 
but uh, they put in a lot of long hours, long days, uh, a lot of time and effort to to be number one. And um, that's that's one thing that I really am proud of my team for is they work tirelessly to to just get the job done at all costs. And NRP will tell you too. We are we are the yes the yes men and women. We don't say no to anything. And uh, we're a family. We're the the most important thing is we treat each other like family. We uh, we're a team. And we do things together. We started doing uh, winemaking last year. There's a there's a place right down the street from us that um, it's called the Wine Room. They uh, you go there, you you, you de what do they call it? Devine the uh, grapes, and then you crush the grapes and you barrel it, put it on a shelf for a year, and then you go back and bottle it. And uh, we did that last year, and we bottled our first uh, USA wine. And we got our own logos and stuff. That's it's pretty awesome. cool. So, but yeah, my team, uh, my team's incredible. It took uh, many years to build the team the way they are. And it's also because I treat them more like coworkers as opposed to me being the boss. I'm not a dictator. I don't say this is how we're doing it. And that's it. In that same tune, you know, I'm just thinking about as you're talking about all these great cultural things you're doing to establish that foundation and that level of respect with your team. Do you guys have any um, or or can you share, Greg, any best practices related to how you go about recruiting talent in general? I know that's a big problem and challenge for a lot of contractors right now. Um, I'd love to hear any advice you have in that area. Yeah, it's, it's definitely a challenge for us as well. We're no different. Um, that's why I said earlier, uh, it took probably 10 years to build the team, management team, uh, and supervisor team that we have because it doesn't happen overnight. And I, I'm a strong believer in if you have the, the, um, the, not the skill, if you have the, like if an employee has the will and the drive to, to be where their potential is, then they're going to get there. It doesn't matter if they had experience in, you know, one thing or not, like you can learn. I have, I have a project manager that knew nothing about roofing. He worked in carpets. He Mm -hmm. sold carpets and sold jobs across the country from an office, you know, and um, scheduled jobs. He was a project manager, like, you know, remotely, but national. And he came into the roofing business. He wanted to learn. He had a will. He had a drive. In less than a year, he knows more than people know in five or 10 years because he was willing to learn it and pick it up. So it's all, and it all depends on, um, yeah, like I said, it all depends on your, your, your ambition. So I look for people who are ambitious and not just stating that in their interview because, you know, a lot of people just say what you want to hear. So you have to try and uh, weed through that. But the other thing is always be hiring. Always oh, have, always be hiring, always be hiring. Never say, oh, we, we don't need anybody right now. Because you never know who's going to come across that you're just like, I have to have this guy. We'll figure it out. We'll absorb the cost for a few months until we, uh, you know, are able to build him into an asset and, you know, what have you and make us generate money for the company, but always be hiring. We always have ads out. We have signs in front of our building now hiring. We're right on route 33. So we get a lot of driving by traffic and uh, we're just always hiring and always looking for that special person who is willing to give their all, be a team player and learn. Love that. Yeah. Yeah. That's really, that's really good. So we're coming, we're coming to the end and um, of our time, but I have a, um, a question because, and I think this is going to be so pertinent and um, different thinking about Uh-oh. the fact that you were on the roof at 11, you took over the business right out of college. Um, what do you see roofing businesses looking like five years, 10 years from now, let's say 10 years from now, how's it going to change? What's it going to look, how's it going to look different? Yeah. Um, well, I think roofs are still going to be the same. They're still going to leak the same. <laughs> They're still going to need the same amount of maintenance and repairs. And, but I, I really think um, 
I really think uh, a lot of it in the future is going to have to do with the level of integrity and quality of work done because what I'm seeing now is a lot of these so-called roofers that are creating a bad name and, uh, you know, for reputable companies uh, that are, uh, you know, people are getting tired of it. They're, they're not. So I think that moving forward in the future, if you are providing quality or a quality job and integrity and honest with the customer and tell them the truth, whether you can get to a job or not, just be honest with them. I think that's going to make a successful roofer in the future. Um, I mean, just two days ago, we had a call from a lady asking us if we would please come and, and inspect the job that she had done, had done on her house by another roofer because she doesn't feel that it was done properly. She just wasn't feeling like they were honest people. She's like, I paid them $6,000 and I don't think they did the right job. Would you guys please just pay you to come out and inspect and tell me, give me your assessment if this was done properly or not. So that that's the kind of thing that we don't like to see, but sadly it's out there and, and um, you know, it happens every day. It happens too often. So I think because of so many people getting into the roofing business that shouldn't be, it's causing that bad reputation now. And it's been, I mean, it's been happening for a while. I would say probably a decade where anyone and, 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 their son or brother or whatever can be a roofer, especially here on the East coast. I'm not sure how it is across the country, but there's no licenses. There's no training. There's no certifications to be a roofer. Anybody can just start a company and go do roofing. So it's a, uh, you know, lack of experience and they just go out and say, yeah, I'm, I'm going to do roofs. Cause you know, I feel like being a roofer today. Yeah. So it's really about, Treating, I, I love that there's this um, saying that they have in that, um, in fact, I heard it in an NRP meeting one time, but that um, I, I, I own a business and I happen to do roofing, right? So you're a business owner first, you're an, um, you have a corporation or whatever it is. And I think that to your point, that's really where the, it is going. It's where before it's like, I'm going to just go out and do roofing. Yeah. It's not just, it's, we know how hard it is, but it's also, no, I'm running a business that does roof. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. That's a hundred percent. And that is, um, a f- yeah, that's the future too, is, is running it as a business and not just I'm a roofer. So yeah, I, that's a good point. It's definitely run, run it as a business, which is something that I learned too, studying in college and reading books was, do not be a one man show. And I know I, I've said that several times mm-hmm. because that's, that's how USA was run for many years. And I was not going to do it that way. I had in my mind that there was no way I was going to be the one man show forever. Yeah. Can't scale one man, right? <laughs> Greg? <laughs> Absolutely. It's a great line. Yeah. You can't scale one man. <laughs> Julie, we're almost at the end. Any uh, last questions or thoughts for Greg? Yeah, I mean, I'm not sweating yet, Julie. Yeah, no, he's, this has been like amazing. <laughs> I feel like I know you so intimately. <laughs> like now I want to meet your wife and your kids and your dad and your brother. <laughs> hey, they'll probably be here shortly. I'm sure I told in. you I'm on the East Coast too. So, you know, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll have to connect soon, I hope. Definitely. No, yeah. I, I personally learned a lot from this call. So um, oh, keep doing you. what you're doing and, um, you know, great things are ahead, no doubt. It, it's been thank great you, to hear your story. Thank you. And I didn't even touch on the, the vacations, the arguments I have with my dad about those. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> I, well, I took my wife real quick. I took my wife to Greece for her 30th birthday a few years ooh, ago. Nice. Wow. Yeah. And we went for two weeks in the end of May and when's busy season start? May, June, May, right? yeah. My 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 dad was furious. <laughs> he was he's like, "What do you mean you're going away? This is our time. To, this is the busy time. This is the time everything happens." I said, "That's why we got a solid team, Dad. You got to trust the team. Yeah. Trust the process." Yeah. But uh, yeah, that was that was that was a rough one. I love it. But I love it. You had to do it. Well, Greg, I know we're going to be having you back again on the coffee shop. There's just no question. This, <laughs> this coffee cast is for all those family businesses out there. 
Um, some, some great nuggets, some great advice. So thank you so much. Thank you for being on the coffee cast and thank you so much for having me. Thank you. And Julie, thank you. Thanks for the, um, first of all, that hover is such a huge part of coffee cast and putting it out there, celebrating these stories. I love doing this with you. It was so fun. Yes. Likewise. I definitely want to learn great. more. Yeah. Uh, we're going to learn we're gonna more have about a, hover. Are you going to? Yeah. Yeah. I'll follow up with you for sure, Greg. You bet. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Love that's too. that's what we're talking about exactly. right there that's it that's the great stuff so thank you all for joining us on this coffee cast sponsored by hover we um, are coming to you monthly if not more to be able to share these stories celebrate these great roofing contractors and what they're doing for the industry to not only bring it up within their families like we heard about today but the professionalism and always roofing respect so join us on the next coffee cast we'll see you then Thank you.